I got to talk about this main card. This main card was nasty. I'm going to start right up at the top. You got Kamaru Usman going up against Jorge Masvidal. Mind you, this is the second fight between them. They fought last year. And the crazy thing about last year's matchup was Jorge Masvidal took the fight against Kamaru Usman on six days notice. And he dropped 20 pounds in under a week to make the weight for that fight. And obviously, he was definitely impacted wow. by that simply just because, dude, when you drop 20 pounds in under a week, your cardio is going to be wrecked going into that fight. And that's what ended up happening. Kamaru ended up winning the fight. So going into this one, these guys were rested. Kamaru had just come off a great win, a great matchup against Gilbert Burns a couple of months ago where he knocked him out as well. And I was thinking that this fight was going to be a five-round fight or at least had a five-round potential that was going to eventually go to a decision. And boy, was I proven wrong. Freaking Kamaru Usman laid a hell of a right hand on Jorge Masvidal and knocked him out cold. It was so crazy that you saw either the sweat or the water freaking fly off of Masvidal's face after that right landed on his face. It nice. was nasty. I saw that video. So, and the crazy thing about Kamaru is that Kamaru's background is in wrestling. He is more of a grappler. And in these last couple fights that he's had, whether it's been against Jorge Masvidal, whether it's been against Gilbert Burns, and even Masvidal the first time last year, he has been getting consistently better at his striking. And then this fight, he took it to a whole new level because he not that Jorge Masvidal. Mind you, the last time that Masvidal got knocked out was over a decade ago. And I don't even think he was in the UFC yet. He's had over 50 pro fights. And this was the first time that he got knocked out. It was just insane. And even Masvidal said after the fight, said, I was expecting more wrestling from Kamaru. And, man, he laid one hell of a right hand and he got me. And I remember even Masvidal said that he has my number, so you have to give a lot of respect to him on that it's, it's just it was a great fight granted it only got to the second round but even so great fight great knockout by Kamaru and I think it really goes without saying at this point that Kamaru might be the best pound for pound for pound fighter in the UFC he's by far and away the best fighter in the welterweight division and a lot of these guys that he's gone up against already He's won fairly convincingly. The last close fight that he had was over two years ago against Colby Covington. Since then, he's pretty much waxed everybody he's gone up against. So got to give a lot of credit to him. And it's going to be a tough task to try to beat this guy, especially now that he's starting to strike well. He is starting to become a complete fighter. And that's very scary when you have to contend with striking and grappling. I, I, man, I pray for the next guy that has, has to go up against him because they're going to have a tough task to deal with with him. And then to move on to the other title fights that we had, we had Rose Nami Yunus. Uh, she had a knockout against Weili Zhang. And this one, this one probably had the most wild reaction from the crowd simply because of the front kick that she was able to land on Zhang. It was gross. nasty. And it was, only with, it was only within like the first minute, minute and a half of the fight. And usually I've always kind of thought like the first round, most fighters are just trying to get a feel for each other, trying to figure out, you know, where some weak points that they can expose in some later rounds. But Nami Yunus made that left foot, just put that left foot to her face and then knocked her on her back. And then she just went for, she just went for hammer fist and she got the, and she got the knockout. And it was crazy simply just because this is the first time that a woman in the UFC has been able to recapture a title that they previously held. So she held the strawweight belt a couple of years ago. She ended up losing it. And then she got it back against Zhang. And she provided some great fireworks with that knockout over the weekend. Like, it's like I mentioned last week. If you guys get a chance to see these fights, you can watch the replays on this on ESPN. Go check them out. It was phenomenal what Rose was able to do. And 
good for her. She's she's had a very prosperous career in the UFC. She's had some ups. She had some downs when she lost the belt about a year ago, but she came back strong. And you want to talk about style points? Landing that that front left kick was crazy. And it's, it's always fun watching the reactions from freaking Joe Rogan, John Anik, and Daniel Cormier. They were going off the rails with the reactions. The reaction videos are just going to be awesome with these three guys back in the booth. And to talk a little bit about the last title fight, we had Valentino Shevchenko go up against Jessica Andrade. And Shevchenko was just a boss. She's a beast. And the thing is, she basically beat Jessica at her own game. Jessica's kind of known more as a grappler. And Valentina said, okay, I see you. Not only am I going to beat you down, I'm going to beat you down at your own game, and there's nothing you're going to do about it. She was phenomenal from beginning to end. She controlled the entire fight. Granted, it only went two rounds, but she just put incredible pressure on Jessica the entire night. And when it got into the second round, there was just no match. Once Jessica got on her back, she couldn't get up. She tried. She couldn't make it happen. And Valentina just put more and more pressure on her to the point where she just had to tap. It's just like, it is what it is. Valentina is one of the best women fighters that we've seen in the UFC, right alongside with Rose Namajunas and Amanda Nunes. She's, she's been unstoppable. And in that flyweight division, there's not much, there's not much talent to really go up against her at this point. She's basically saying at the end of these post-fight conferences or these post-fight uh, interviews with Rogan, it's like I'm waiting for somebody to come out and show me what they've got. And as far as I'm concerned, it's not going to be any, anybody anytime soon. She's amazing. Ain't nobody got nothing. <laughs> exactly. She's she's just waxing every girl that she goes up against. So, like I said. A great card this weekend. If you guys got the chance to watch it, man, I, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I do want to talk a little bit about Chris Weidman. He suffered a catastrophic uh, leg injury this past weekend going up against Uriah Hall. It was really tough to watch. And it was interesting watching the replay because the replay was interesting from this perspective. So what happened is Chris Weidman, he had a leg kick. In like the first like 10 to 15 seconds of the round. It was round one. And does this leg kick and his leg just shatters. The crazy thing is when you watch the replay, he doesn't really experience pain instantaneously. It's not until he puts his foot back on the ground. That's when you see him just writhing in pain. And it was just, it was just awful to see. It really, it brings up some, some awful memories with, um, with Anderson Silva breaking his leg in a very similar manner against Chris Weidman. It was against Weidman. This was like 10 years ago. And it's just, it's so was ironic. It really? I don't know if it was 10 years ago, but it, I mean, it was like five to 10 years ago. It was a while. I, rem I, rem I remember the break though. Ugh. But it was against Weidman. It's just, it's so ironic that that guy had basically the same injury. And, and, and Kev, these are very uncommon injuries. These these do not happen very often in the UFC, like where you see this type of significant leg injury. But those 2013. leg 2013. Okay, so it was almost 10 years ago. But that's the thing with those leg kicks, man. Those leg kicks, they could be brutal dishing them out. But if your leg is not up to snuff, and I imagine he probably had some micro fractures or maybe some stress fractures, uh, that he didn't know about going into that fight. Because usually when you see something like that, there's usually some sort of like underlying medical issue that they didn't see or that he didn't know about um, when you see that type of break. And I remember Kevin and I, we talked about this before the episode even started. We were saying that um, it's very odd to see these injuries and – it just sucks. It really does suck to see these injuries because Weidman's kind of like at the tail end of his career. And um, it's just, it's really unfortunate for him. But yeah, outside of that, I thought Dana put on a spectacular performance or he put on a great show this weekend. And I just, I can't wait to see more uh, from the UFC. And I hope that these 
fans are allowed back into the arena because the atmosphere was electric from beginning to end. 